Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast. I'm your host, Surreal Gerald Quinn. As we sadly, man, 10 weeks, 10 weeks goes by fast. As we sadly come to the end of season four of Snowfall. Of course, this is episode 773 of the Real Deal Podcast. Uh, season four, Snowfall, episode 10, Fight or Flight. Uh, this was a um, themes in terms of the themes. It definitely had to be consequences. We saw the consequences of the actions of the actions of um, Franklin Saint, kind of you know, you know, or and also along Franklin Saint, along with uh, you know Alton, his father, um, take um, take full effect and kind of the results of those choices and consequences that have been made over the course of a, of a season. Um, this was a very, just, you know, from start to finish, this season has been hard hitting and has been, uh, it's just been a tremendous season. Uh, and I had some trepidation going into the season with, of course, the, the death of, of, of one John Singleton you know, a couple of years back. Um, again, I don't know how much of this season he was involved in. I know it wasn't the full, uh, he didn't write the full, this full season. I, I know that. But um, this was, uh, and we'll talk more about it later. This was a tremendous season, to say the least. We're going to jump right into best scenes. Um, so the episode kicks off with young Franklin and a young Alton. Alton, of course, was uh, a Black Panther. Um, Franklin gets in trouble for uh, at school for not standing up for the Pledge of Allegiance, which I found hilarious because uh, I did the same thing one time back in elementary school, uh, way way back in the day. So a little irony from from that standpoint, I found that amusing. Um, and you know, basically, Alton comes up to the school and lets the teacher know tells the teacher, hey, I instructed him not to do so, not to do so. Um, so, it, and Alton says, I'm taking you out to school. Um, Franklin says he doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to leave school because all his friends are there. And the young actor, by the way, looked just like Damson Ildris. I like how he could be a young Damson Ildris. Like, so they did, that was great casting, finding somebody who, who uh, with similar features like a you know like like what what a young eight year old Franklin looked like, uh, perfect casting from that standpoint, and basically we see the beginning of the origins of Franklin being you know that anti-establishment, uh, that streak of you know doing things his way, um, going against the grain, and uh, gets it from his dad. You know it's just that simple. So uh, that really. You know that scene really set Franklin on his course to where he's at right now. To be honest with you, um, even though you know his father did, father didn't introduce him to the drug game, but just that mentality of uh, you know you don't know, you know being a leader and not you know not following the grain, you know not following the you know not being not being a follower or not go, or going against the grain. That we see that we see where that 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 where that came from. So we go to uh, Franklin, Teddy, uh, discussing Alton. Um, Franklin, uh, Teddy sees that uh, hears that Alton is on the radio. So Alton goes on the radio, uh, which is of course his his uh, Black Panther partner or ex former Black Panther partner. Who has a radio station? Uh, who has a radio station? Same radio. Who has a radio show? And of course, it's that same show that Irene went on and started, you know, spilling the beans as far as it started um, spilling the beans. So he out and goes all out. He, you know, talks about the CIA, the drugs, and he, you know, makes. Then he mentions uh, Teddy Max uh, alias. Um, Reed name Reed Thompson, so that Reed Thompson, of course, Reed Thompson is is is, is his government is is uh, Teddy's FBI name. That's his FBI name. His real name, of course, is, T- is Teddy McDonald, 
he mentions his name, his name, Reed Thompson, and Alvin says, hey, I got, I know his real name. Uh, of course, Teddy hears this and is completely just incensed by this, is in a state of panic and tells, you know, gets Franklin uh, on the phone, pages Franklin, um, tells Franklin, hey, I gave you a chance to, you know, Franklin says, hey, listen, I'm taking care of it. After Franklin hears, hears it on the radio in, in, in his car with, uh, with Leon, he um, tells Teddy, look, I got it under control. I'm taking care of it. And basically Teddy's like, nah, you, you, I, you know, you've had your chance to take care of it. It's time for me. Um, it's time for me to handle this. And Franklin, you know, says, hey, I don't, you know, take threats lightly. I don't take, you know, I don't do well with, with threats and what, and what have you. So the episode is, you know, in full, uh, you know, the episode is in full gear from that stand from that time on. Franklin goes back in the car with Leon and Leon just looks at him basically like, you know, doesn't even, I don't think Leon even says anything, but just that look of, you know, kind of uh, semi disgust and basically like, yo, you know, what you going, kind of like what you going to do, that type of look. So we get to Franklin, Alton and Scully. So Franklin is in his house. Um, he, now a lot led up to this. Okay. So Franklin immediately wants to find wants to find Alton. He knows Teddy is going to be after him. So Franklin, and this is this is a this is classic Franklin saying, he shuts down Alton's homeless shelter until the word until word gets back to Alton to where he can finally get a location until he to uh, not get a location with Alton but no but have Alton contact him. So he he intentionally shuts down the the homeless shelter. Alton then finds Franklin. And they have a conversation about, about Teddy. And basically, Franklin's like, look, man, this dude is a trained killer. Uh, Alvin says, well, are you afraid of him? And Franklin says, yeah, of course. He says, it's, it's, it's not just him, it's the CIA. Alvin basically says, you know, if I, you know, you know, if I take him out, they won't miss him. And Franklin's basically like, like, come on, man, you can't, like, you're not going to take, you're not going to, you can't take him out without the old CIA being on your ass, which Franklin, of course, is right. And also Franklin is thinking about the future of his business, his own drug, his own business in terms of the drug empire. And of course, we know Alton wants Franklin out. That still was a motivation for Alton, not just exposing Teddy Mac, but also, you know, taking Franklin out, getting Franklin out of the drug game. So in the middle of this discussion, we, of course, Scully, who is now back, you know, has, has kind of put aside his uh, love for Christ and for Jesus and, and put that aside for a put that on hold for a second, is back on the rampage um, after, you know, finding out, of course, in the last episode, what, what happened with Khadijah, her being killed by uh, Franklin and Jerome. And now he is out, you know, shotgun and all, like, you know, like, look, like uh, Omar. He's out on a rampage. He breaks into Franklin's house as they are talking. Um, just and, and, and DeAndre Bonds is just tremendous as his character because it, it, he's crazy, but he, he's a likable crazy. Like, he, like he, you don't root against Scully. Like if that makes sense for somebody being a, just a cold blood killer, he, he's actually a, a, an endearing killer if there is such a thing. Uh, but just again, just just. So he was tremendous this season, uh, DeAndre Bonds in, doing in this role. So they, of course, have the advantage because they it's their house um, and they know some where the hiding spots at. So they able to shoot him out and shoots him as Franklin sets him up. He sees Franklin and as Franklin as he's about to shoot Franklin, uh, Alton shoots him. Scully shoots Alton in the shoulder, but but Alton. But uh, Scully clearly gets the worst of, of, of the shots as he's shot in the uh, stomach area. He um, he gets out. Uh, he gets out, and Franklin patches Alton up, uh, patches his shoulder up. Says, "You know, you need to go to the hospital." Alton says, "No, uh, we're still, you know, I'm still on this Teddy, still on the hunt for Teddy Mac." Um, and Franklin, of course, tries to talk him out of it. And Alton is not hearing it, and eventually Alton knocks Franklin out from behind, from the back, in the back of the head, takes his pager, 
uh, as is, you know, as is a means to, um, you know, so, you know, in order to get in, um, in order to get in contact with, uh, with Teddy Mac. So we go to the big scene, one of the big scenes of, of the episode, it was dueling scenes. So you had Franklin, Teddy, Alton, and Sissy. Now, so you have, um, before this scene, Sissy demands to go with uh, Franklin to look for, uh, to look for Alton. Franklin knows that Alton is after Teddy. Franklin knows that Teddy's after Alton. So Franklin, uh, Teddy, you know, and this is, this is what I found interesting about this whole sequence. So Teddy tells Franklin where they're gonna meet for whatever reason. I, I, I don't think it's bad writing, but I was just confused or in terms of what, it, you know, was his it, it was his intention to kill him right then and there? If his intention was to kill him right then and then then and there, why would he want Franklin there there on uh, there on the scene as well? So I was kind of thrown off by that, which made thrown off by that. But anyway, Franklin Teddy tells basically Teddy tells Franklin, look, you know, we had to almost got the point of no return, but out of respect for you, I'm going to tell you where we're going to meet, where we're meeting. So Franklin's in a rush to. Into to that location, Sissy's like, "Hey, who broke into the house? Um, where's your father?" So she's in a panic and refuses to not let take, tell demands that she goes with Franklin. So Franklin, so Franklin and Sissy head to meet to meet up with uh, to find Alton and also with Ted to meet up with Teddy. Teddy and Alton get to the scene to the scene first. Teddy and Alton get to the scene first. They discuss. You know, basically, you say, "Hey, we both got, we both have something to protect. We will protect what we have to protect at all costs." Alton goes into his whole, you know, you know, this whole. I'm not gonna say rhetoric, but goes basically goes into his whole. Say, since the beginning of time, you've been out. You know, the government has been out for the black man, and you know, Teddy. Remember, he's the ex Black Panther. He, is, you know, his ex Black Panther. Teddy's like, look, I, you know, that that system. You're gonna blame me for being oppressed. I'm, you know, I, I'm not to blame here, um, and you know, I'm gonna protect what I have at all costs. So Teddy gets out the car, and he says, with his hands up, Alton has a gun. Alton has a gun, uh, a revolver at that. Something that you, one of these guns that you have to actually put the bullets in, not a clip. Teddy's gun is taped to the car door. He opens the car door up. And he has a gun right by the car door. So he's, he, he's trying to play like he's unarmed and innocent, but we know Teddy is Teddy Mac. I mean, we, we know how he, how he moves. So they get into this discussion. And then you have Franklin and Sissy come up. And it gets to a point to where Teddy pulls his gun. Alan has his gun. Um, Franklin has his gun. So Sissy intervenes and says, look, if you let him go, we will just go, we'll, we'll go away forever. We'll go away to Cuba, like we like he originally planned a couple of episodes back, just let him go. So she gets in the middle of Alton and Teddy. So Teddy would have, would have had to shoot Sissy to get to Alton. Franklin, of course, you know, is like, uh, Franklin, of course, has the gun on, uh, on Teddy because now his mother's involved. Um, I wonder what that scene would have looked like with no sissy. We knew the scene was coming, but I did not anticipate the scene to be with sissy. Um, but again, we we will it'll, it'll make more sense if you watch the episode. It'll definitely make more sense why sissy was involved in this scene. So sissy initially convinces Alton, uh, convinces uh, Teddy to basically stand down and let them go to Cuba uh, for now. Um, and also Franklin was going to, and Teddy, this, I, I think Teddy was surprised that Franklin turned on him from the standpoint and not completely and not, I, I think, I really think Teddy invited, uh, invited Franklin with a thought process that Franklin would not give up his drug empire for a father who really hasn't been there, been there for him per se. So I really think that that was that was going through Teddy's mind. That Frank, and he says, "Listen, 
Um, because during the conversation, even before they got there, um, Teddy tells Alan, like, hey, Alan tells Teddy, like, look, I want, you know, I want my son out of this. And Teddy's like, look, all right, we he made his own choice. Let's see, let's see what he, you know, T- Teddy knowing that Alan was on that that uh Franklin was on his way to the scene, to the spot, says, you know. Let, let's see what let's see his decision. He's he pretty much made his own choice, made up, made up his own choices. So I kind of, I, I think Teddy was, first of all, I don't think Teddy was expecting Sissy, number one. And two, I also think that Teddy was expecting Franklin to fully back him. So that was not the case. Franklin keeps a gun pointed at Teddy, just in case Teddy, you know, buses on, uh, lets off some shots with at Alden or more importantly towards his mother. So. Franklin, so Teddy stands down, sets up a private plane to Cuba. Uh, they have a goodbye. Uh, it was an emotional goodbye from the standpoint from Sissy and Franklin. Franklin didn't have anything basically to say to his father. Um, his father says, I'm sorry. And then he goes on. Then you see Franklin and Sissy share, you know, who knows, maybe one final no- moment. We, you know, we won't know till next season but they share a moment before they go on the a private plane. Now, during the scene, and this was, uh, this was very dramatic in terms of how they shot this. You had, at the same time, Scully, who was wounded, show up at the hospital. Jerome has stepped out for a second. His jacket was on the chair. And you have Scully pointing the gun at Louis. So, Scully, of course, tells Louis, you know, asks Louis, hey, where's Jerome at? And Louis, of course, is going to do whatever to protect Jerome. She says, he, you know, he headed out for the night, for the evening, but Scully saw Jerome's jacket and didn't believe it. So now Jerome comes back and Jerome says, look, you know, I'm the one that basically killed Khadija. Take, you know, don't, you know, it's put, put this on me. Now, again, as this scene is, is progressing, Scully is losing blood, a lot of blood. It's, is you know he got shot in the in the the um, in the stomach, and he's he's weakening as the scene is going by. Um, and you see blood you know dripping down his leg and on in, into his shoe. So he's you know he's almost he's almost at the end. So then he points the gun back to Louis, and Louis uh, talks him down. Basically says, "Look, you take me out." My people's gonna come after you. This and this never, and it will never come to a. It will never come. This will never come to an end. Uh, for a, so for a split second, you see Scully lower the gun, and then Jerome, seeing that Scully is in a weakened state, disarms Scully, uh, takes him to the ground, and Scully dies on the ground because, of course, that gun. You know, he dies from the gunshot. Uh, from, you know, via Alton from early on in, in the episode. Now, you want to say a couple of things. You want to say that there's no way in the world that Scully, I thought when that, that came in, when that scene came about, I, I thought for sure Scully was going to take out one of them. I really, I really did. But you got to take into consideration that Scully um, really lost his mojo over the course of the season as, as this stone cold killer. Think about it. You know, it was really man boy and Khadija who were the, the main killers in terms of being on that side of the tracks opposite Franklin. And, you know, after Scully, you know, loses his daughter. Remember there are two characters that were dramatic. Well, three characters that were dramatically affected from the loss of the five-year-old. And obviously you have Scully and Khadija. Khadija goes into killer mode. Leon has has yet to recover from that, from, from actually being the one to pull the trigger, pull the trigger. And you have to say Scully as well. Scully, you know, believed that, you know, this was God punishing him for his ways and for the things that for how he was living his life. And really the past three or four episodes, Scully had been a shell of what mentally of what he was at the beginning of the, of the season. And of course, at the end of last season, as this cold-blooded killer. So I think they kind of have been setting this up uh, over the course of the season to to, to kind of tell you, I, you know, I think the message is 
just the consequences of what uh of you know of, of killing a, a, a of a child's death you know rang on this season that that you know, well, I forget the girl name I forgot her name what her name was um what Scully what the, her, her her daughter's name was but that that death really really had a black you know really uh there was really a black cloud over this season in regards to those characters with that one death and I think that was the message that the writers were trying to convey. Again, the consequences, again, this is Scully. We talk about Scully consequences, and that was the theme of this episode to me, the consequences of him with that lifestyle, bringing his daughter into that lifestyle, per se, having her around that lifestyle, something that Man Boy talked about, talked about, he talked about with Man Boy earlier in the season, man, he was kind of reticent, and he was, you know, was uh, dis, uh, not despondent, but he, was you know blaming himself uh, in a scene earlier this season with Man Boy saying that you told me not to bring around this shit. So maybe and maybe Scully felt guilt from that standpoint and felt like he in essence was responsible for not only his daughter's death but now you know Khadija's death. I guess I I guess I had a hard time believing that Scully would not shoot either Louis or Jerome. Don't have a major problem with it, but it's kind of like, eh. He's not gonna take out one of them, but for the big, for what for what the show is gonna try to do, I'm glad that neither Jerome or or, or, or Louis were killed. To be honest with you, yeah, so uh, to be honest with you, so you had that going on. So let's go to Louis Jerome Franklin. So now some context for this scene: Franklin coming off the hills of watching his parents fly to Cuba, goes to the hospital to visit Louis. Um, he sees the police there, sees Jerome. Jerome tells him about Scully, tells him what what, what transpired, and you know basically it's you know basically it's a rap for Scully. We assuming that Scully's dead, uh, by the way. Um, and he says to Jerome, "Look, you know, um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go holler at Louis real quick." He says, "Nah, not right now, not right now." Very. For, by, of course, a lot of foreshadowing from, from that standpoint in terms of what will happen with the next scene, but also to remember what Man Boy told, what Man Boy said to Jerome, excuse me, said to Franklin in the previous episode about, you know, Leon and, and Louis and Jerome in terms of not so much betrayal, but they, you know, they go on, well, he did say they didn't want to, want to betray him. So we get to the Louis, Jerome, and Franklin. Uh, they go back to the club. They're in the club. They talk about business at the club and how they've been maintaining since Louis has been in the hospital. Louis, of course, is of course still struggling from the from the you know from the gunshot wound. Um, but maybe she's struggling physically, but mentally she's sharper than ever because Louis, Louis and Jerome, and this this was a Louis driven plan. This wasn't this was I have no doubt in my mind that this that this, that this was Louis. Louis is the mastermind behind. A lot. She's very, very smart character. A very just cunning. She's, you know, her and her and Franklin are cut from the same, you know, two peas in a pie in terms of how they think. So Louis basically says, "Hey, you know, we are, we're no longer a part of your organization. We're going to go. We have Arkansas. We're going to do our own thing. We'll buy at a higher price from you." Uh, and Franklin is is in shock with this. He's in complete shock with this. And Louis basically says, hey, if you, you know, if you're not with this, then we can go, it can go another way. Like we can, we can go buy from somebody else. Like we're, we're breaking away from you. That was the main, that was the main message that was conveyed to Franklin that we are no longer, like we, you know, we are branching off and doing our own thing. We are no longer under your thumb. Um, now again, Taking into consideration this, okay. And by the way, this a part of this too was a part of the thinking that the reason why they thought that they that they could make this move is because they held they held shit down when Franklin was injured. Remember when Melanie shot him last season? They are the ones that held his business together. Okay, so they feel like, hey, we don't really particularly need you. Uh, we don't need to be under you from that standpoint. We don't need you to be the boss of boss of us. And by the way, listen, Louis gets shot. Uh, Franklin keeping Jerome 
are away from the, you know, keeping Jerome out of the loop as far as what was going on with uh, Teddy and the CIA. So Jerome's not happy from, from that standpoint. Um, so this, this is very interesting. And, and of course, this, this is going to tie in the Arkansas, what they saw in Arkansas. So this, this brings that back into play for next season. I told you early in the season that Arkansas would be next season. So that they're going to go, they're going to do the Arkansas connection, drug connection next season. I'm not surprised by that at all. And they, of course, Louis is going to be headed by Louis and Jerome. So uh, they basically gave Franklin, you know, time to think, gave him a you know, short time to think about it. So we go to Franklin and Leon. Franklin says, you know, explains to Leon what was tra transpired with Jerome and Louis. And Leon says, look, give them what they want. Um, a little bit before that, let me go back to Frank, to Jerome, Louis, and Franklin. So Franklin tries to talk, of course, tries to talk Louis and Jerome out of this, and basically says, "How did that work out for Leon?" And because at this point he's desperate, and they said, "Well, we're not Leon." And guess what? They're right. <laughs> Remember, Frank, Jerome was doing dime bags, and he helped introduce Franklin into the drug game. Louis is is as smart as a whip. We know, we know she is deep into the game. We know the type of hustler she is. So from that standpoint, they're right. So you go into, so Frank, Leon, go, go, we go to Franklin and Leon. Leon tries to tell Franklin, give them what they want. Just give them what they want. You're better off with them because they will respect you more. Remember, Leon spent a lot of time with Jerome this season. So they were able to, he's kind of try to, he, kind of got to see how Jerome thinks on a deeper level. And he knows Jerome is all about respect. Okay, we saw how he handled with the OG, the brother, uh, his guy, uh, Fatback's cousin, how he navigated that situation. So Leon says, hey, they will they will respect you, even though you're going to be making less money, is they will respect you. And, you know, Franklin says, okay, now you're thinking like, oh, now you're thinking like, oh, what we said, when did you become wise and what have you? And then uh, Franklin, you know, thinks that everything is back to normal as far as Leon says, hey, you know, in regards to the projects, let's, he starts discussing next moves about the future of the business. And Leon's like, eh, I don't know if I want any of this anymore. I don't know if I want it. Remember, Leon has been mentally disabled with the shooting of that young girl. So Franklin's ba Franklin goes into like, nigga, what? Like, that's, that's that was the mentality that Franklin had as far as like I risked this whole operation for you in terms of not giving you up. He says, I know, you know. He says, No, you you're gonna do this. He says, You're gonna you're gonna soldier up and we're gonna we're gonna become a family again. And he kinda it, like he basically in a way it was it was a threat, non-threat. But how again, Damson Ildris, both actors were tremendous in the scene. Damson Ildris, his performance this episode this season, it's just, you know, if he doesn't get an Emmy nomination, you know, there shouldn't be any, shouldn't be awards. But you can tell that he he was he was the menacing aspect of and that, that cunning that part of Franklin was completely back. So he basically tells Leon, get, he tells Leon, like, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, you, you you in this? Nah, I I risked all this for you. I could have gave you up the man boy. I could have gave you didn't give you up the scully. No, no, no. You you're in this. This there's no retirement from this. Um, we go to Alton, Teddy, and Sissy. So Franklin and uh, there was a scene where Franklin and Teddy meet up. Teddy says, um, "I'm gonna go away for a while." I'm going to remember. now keep in mind Teddy has been um, Teddy uh, has been relieved of duties from the CIA, but he's still a part of it. I think he's been just been fired from this particular part uh, part of of his job. So he Teddy gets everything in line. He tells Gustavo like your replace like my replacement's coming in. It's going to be business as usual. And he tells Franklin, like, I, you know, I'm going away for a while. 
you'll get you'll meet up with my connect. It'll be you'll meet up with the new person soon enough and, and what have you. So I was still here. So they go through all that business. Franklin says, How long? And you know, Teddy's like, you know, for a while. So at that kind of was a hint that Teddy wasn't done with Alden. So we go, we fast forward to Cuba, Alden, Teddy, Sissy. You know, Sissy and Alton wake up. They're in Cuba, they're smiling, we know, but we know that this is not gonna be a happy ending. Sissy leaves to go somewhere. Um, and we see as soon as she leaves, we see Teddy come in with, you know, hat with a gun. Alden is reading a book called Spook, a spook, the spook by the door, the spook that sat by the door, which I strongly recommend. Um and basically Alden is res resigned to his fate. Um, he's not arguing. Of course, he's not armed. Um, and Teddy, we don't see Teddy actually shoot him, but we have to assume that it, only, it would only make sense that Teddy uh, took out Alton. Um, we saw the gun. And the bottom line is, Alton, despite the fact that he's going to, to Cuba, Alton, Teddy is a loose end. Eddie, Alton is a loose end. And you're in the business of, of Teddy if you're in the business like where like Teddy is, that type of business with the CIA, it, it was just too much to risk to leave Alden alive. I don't believe that Sissy had anything to do with this. Uh, I know people on the internet were speculating, well, as soon as he walked out, he walked in like, no, this was all uh, Teddy Mac. This was all, he had no intentions of leaving Alden, letting Alden live. He stood down at the airport or at the, uh, with that scene with Franklin, to kind of appease Franklin. He wasn't going to kill. He knows if he, first of all, like he would have been shot himself. So again, Teddy's not, Teddy's no dummy by any stretch of imagination. If he shoots, he shoots out and shoots Sissy, then he's a dead man. So, and he, so that, that like he was going, he, he waited it out. He was patient from that standpoint, convinced Franklin that everything was fine. The parents would be okay. Uh, the question is, you know, will he let, and we're gonna to have to wait till next season to find this out. Is he gonna let Sissy live? That's the question. That's the big question. That's the question about this scene. We know Alden is dead. Shout out to Kevin Carroll for just he was, you know, if there was a best supporting actor for this season, he certainly was it. He was tremendous in the, during the course of the season, but he's gone. And it makes sense. Like his character, his storyline, uh, his storyline had kind of went, came full circle. Um that came full circle. So it, there, it was not too much more that they could do with his character when you're trying to develop other characters and other storylines moving forward. Um, so the question is whether or not did Alton, did Teddy also kill Sissy? I'm gonna guess probably not. I'm gonna guess probably not. Uh, so we end the episode with Franklin and Melody. I'm glad they brought Melody back. We hadn't seen Melody basically the entire season. We saw Melody like twice. This season, so Frank, of course, she's fully devote, reformed Christian. She's, uh, you know, volunteering at somewhere at a school, somewhere, somewhere she was doing, passing out Bibles and what have you. And she, Franklin, creeps up on her with the cane, and basically says, "Look, you know, I'm not upset at you as shooting me, but the fact that you, he comes. First of all, he comes out. He comes at her from the standpoint of." Tells her that the reporter that she that he know that he knows that she conversed with Irene is dead. Uh, Melody says, "You know how did she die?" He says, "Car accident." Then he says, "You know it could happen to anybody." Which you know this is a uh, which was a you know a veiled threat at her. Then he says, "I'm disappointed that you would go to her. Uh, that you would go to her," and says. Basically gives and he basically outright outright threats her says that no basically says you will get you get no more chances after this you get no more you will get no more chances and it was I I, I didn't think that he was going to kill her I part, but part of me thought that he might kill her I'm not I can't say that I can't I can't say that I didn't was her, was 100 percent on board in terms of her not thinking that he wasn't going to kill her but part of me thought that he might actually <laughs> kill her. But he basically says, this better, not, this, better not, this better not ever happen again. Walks and limps away. 
then as a scene, you know, as you know, the Curtis Mayfield pusher man is, 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 is being queued up, he drops it, he puts the cane, hangs the cane on a chair and walks away. Uh, I heard people comparing it to, you know, usual suspects, Kaiser Sosa at the Kevin Spacey at the end of that movie. Yeah, it, 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 it kind of apples and oranges, but uh, I, I understand it. And, you know, the, the season wraps up with Curtis Mayfield, classic pusher man. And we see uh, Franklin, you know, in his bag. And, you know, that, that was the, uh, the end of the episode. Just, just again, a phenomenal episode. It, you know, to, it is very, very difficult to end a season and lead into the next season. It's, it's, cla- it's, it's hard a lot. That's why a lot of these episodes, a lot of these season finales are not good in these shows. Because because of the challenge of trying to wrap up a season and also give you some some gem, give you some you know uh, some nuggets for next season. They did as well as uh, as well as a good a good as a job as you could possibly do. We know we know we're headed towards a Franklin Teddy war next season. That's coming. We know that uh, that's just that's, in, that's inevitable. Um, we know Jerome Louis Arkansas. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much Melody will be involved next season. I think that might that might that could be the last we see a Melody. I hope not, but uh, that could be the last we see a Melody. Um, listen, Franklin, you know he. I said over the course of the season, it, it was a season of lost for Franklin. He loses, you know. He now stands almost by himself in many. I mean, he has Peaches, his bodyguard, and he has Leon somewhat reluctantly. I mean, he has a, a Leon who basically has no choice but to be, you know, but to uh, be with him. He has a but to be uh, connected to him. But he really, he really is alone at this point. His parents are gone. Um, you see that. Uh, he, you know, this was a season of loss for for him. You know, he was losing things by, you know, by the episode. And, you know, again, the Teddy Franklin relationship is, you know, a, again, he doesn't know about his father and what transpired with his father, but he will find out soon enough that they were not very interested to see how they play that. Because, I mean, eventually, you know, it's, when, when his mom, when he doesn't hear from his parents or doesn't hear from his father, you know, he, he's going to find out that his father is gone. Um, and he's gonna immediately he's gonna immediately know who it was. Like he's too smart. So I he, I I have I, I would say that he's gonna spend an entire season plotting in terms of how to take out Teddy Mac. That will drive the season. Again, in terms of themes, we talked about consequences, we called the consequences of the actions of of uh Franklin. We saw the consequences of the actions of Alton. And we saw, of course, the consequences of the actions of, of Scully um, in regards to uh, in regards to what transpired with Khadija last episode, his daughter, a few episodes back, and and and, and how that brought him brought him down. A um, couple of thoughts, uh, Gustavo. So Gustavo gets pictures of of, of Lucia, uh, so she is alive. Um, they, I don't, I don't know if he has a location on it, but they just, they just showed the picture. So that's going to be a plot, a plot thread for next, for next season. We, we which thank, and hopefully, and I, I like Lucia's character. So we'll see what they do with that. Uh, we don't know when season five is coming back. Remember this season came back in the, in winter. This is normally a summer show. So, um, will they come back? Will they wait? You know, spring of 2022 or summer of 2022. I'll be very curious to see um, when they come back. Come back, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to be 2022. Um, again, I, I think that this pound for pound to me was the best season in, in the entire series, and I'm not somebody who is a uh, a uh, prisoner of the moment. But I, 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 to me, there's no question on mind that this was. Uh, this was the best season of the entire series. 
MVP has to be Franklin Saint of not only this season of the episode, but of the season. I mean, Damson Eldris, he owned this he owned this role from start to finish. Um, he's a brilliant young actor. I'm curious to see how his where his career goes from here, um, beyond Snowfall. And uh, I like I loved how they how they have developed slow developed his rise as a drug kingpin. Uh, I think they're doing a brilliant job of that. They're not is going at a nice and steady pace. And I think next season you're going to see him being a outright cold blooded killer. I really think I, I think that that his father being killed was is going to take him to a dark place and it's going to make him, you know, go into a place where he, you know, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be Godfather like as far as how, as far as, you know, he's already, we're talking about the guy who's already power driven, power hungry and loves, he loves to, you know, he loves to be a drug kingpin. He, I mean, he, he's not, if you, if he had a, listen, if you, if you gave him an option of getting out, Let's say, like, we'll give you $100 million. You can get out the business. Don't have to do this. And you go become a businessman like Stringer Bell wanted to be, like Marlo could have been at the end of The Wire. I think he still would choose this lifestyle. I think he's married to the game. Um, So it'll be very interesting to see what they do, how they expand on his character for next season. Again, this has been, you know, a phenomenal season, to say the least. I've had fun covering these uh doing these 10 10 episodes with you um i will see you next time and enjoy the episode enjoy the rest of your evening so long